I think uh, we can start now. Uh, we have uh, about we have um, uh, these examples is required. Uh, long calculation. So I'm not going to write on the on the on the surface uh, pro because the maths is very simple here. It's just uh, plugging the value uh, and and find the details. Uh, I'm going to walk you through that details because if I write it, I will not even able to finish the 10% of the examples. Uh, so whatever the theory uh, covered uh, by header, uh, we are going to show that theory by the numbers, by the maths, um, to the example demonstrations. So let me share with you the screen. Uh, uh, let me now. So this is an example you can find in your in your lecture notes. Uh, we have a design the shear reinforcement for 650 by 350 cantilever beam so on. So you have uh, you have 650 uh, 650 by 350 uh, the the beam size that we need to we need to design. Uh, beam so on cover the fitment is to be 40 millimeter on the all side so there is a cover so cover meaning that uh, if you have a this bottom rio and these fitments you have this cover uh, that 40 millimeters given to you that is for durability and they have give you the concrete compressive strength FCDS. so basically they want to find the shear reinforcement Okay, so what does it mean shear reinforcement? This is a concrete beam as you can see that this is the concrete beam R so on here. Now they want you to find find how much fitments you needed. Like you need 5 fitments, 10 15, 15 15 and how much you need the spacing between one fitment to the another fitments. Right? So that's the question she's asking you in these examples. Of course these fitments need to satisfy the our shear demand that you have a shear demand given to you of course the we need to provide the necessary fitments that will fulfill the demand there is another requirement cracking and the spacing requirement these all the requirements should be satisfied in a way that we need to provide these these fitments so the the concrete beam is given here it has a let's say column supports at a let's say there is a support at b the support has a width of 300 millimeters. The support B has a width of uh, uh, 300 millimeters. Uh, support has given the name here because for our mathematics and for reference purpose, we call it support A, then we call it support B, and this end, which is the cantilever part, you can have a support C, uh, just a N C. This loading also given to you 150 kilonewton per meters. That's uniformly distributed load coming on to the slab, uh, coming on to this beam. Now, uh, the, uh, the center to center distance from support A to support B is 5.2 meters. So on here and the center distance uh, the, from the center of the support B to the ANC is 1.8 meters. That dimension is given to us. Um, now, you, uh, we can draw the shear force diagrams as you saw on here. Uh, we are not testing your knowledge in these subjects to draw the shear force diagram. So the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram will be given to you either in test or wherever. So shear force diagrams, you no need to draw it. As you can see, uh, significantly higher shear near the supports and near almost in the mid span, you have zero shear where you have higher bending moments. You again have a very high shear. So if you want to know what is the shear here, you can plus this 437 plus 270. 437 plus 270 or you can just take the maximum. Other than plus, you say that, okay, what would be the shear at uh, at support B? You said uh, shear at support B would be 437 kilo newton because you are going to design the shear 437. So if you have 270 kilo newtons, it will still um, if you design for 437 kilonewton, see here, this is valid for 270 kilonewtons as well. So we will, so if you come across two sears, like at support B, you can see at support B, you have a two sears. One is 270, another one is 437. So your design will focus on 437 kilonewton uh, sear force. 
so basically it says that uh, if you have this loading if you have this loading you need uh, you provide the seer uh, reinforcement that satisfy 343 you provide the seer reinforcement that satisfy 437 you provide the seer reinforcement that satisfy 437 so that is basically basically saying so you have seer force diagram i know i hope you know how to draw the seer force diagram but the aim of the subject is not to teach you seer force diagram but this seer force diagram is denoted by v star v star meaning v star at support uh, a is 343, V star at support B is 437, V star at and, and C is 0. So that is called design CR force. Uh, some details also given to you that is the tensile reinforcement. This is 4N28, that is for bending. You have 2N24 and 2N20 uh, for, 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 for the bending purpose. Look, this CR design is always followed by the bending designs. We never do the checks for the CR. Of course, you can, there is no Tom's rules saying that you can't do the CR check before the bending. But as a general procedure, this design for the beam will govern by the bending. Uh, like a like a bending criteria. So you, if your beam need to be go through the size of the beam like 650 by 350 meaning that this beam has passed for the bending checks. That's what it's meaning of these sear checks that okay we will do the sear check after the bending check. So the size of the beam, the reinforcement, tensile reinforcement and the compression reinforcement has been passed the bending check for strength uh, purpose. So that has been done before. We have not shown here, but let's say someone has done the check for us. Now the step number one, they did not say that which fitments you're going to use it, right? They did not say we, which fitments you're going to use it. Now, typically we use this R10 fitments. What is R? R stands for the, uh, the purity class uh, and 10 is the diameter. So if you take the uh, cross section of that fitment, that is the diameter for that uh for that um, for that fitments we generally use double leg fitments like you have leg number one and leg number two with these anchors so you can hold that bar on that on that tensile uh rear. Uh, i can show it to you on the uh picture so that is basically i'm talking about this is the uh, this is the sear reinforcement as you can see this is smaller diameter than your typical uh, main longitudinal reinforcement and these are uh, uh, so on here. Now these are uh, as I mentioned two legs as you can see leg number one and leg number two. These verticals bar for sear. Now someone might say what this will happen. What 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 will do what this horizontal uh, what what it gonna help. The horizontal will help in the torsion resistance. It will provide the resistance against torsion. And look, sear and torsion will work together. It will not be separate phenomena, but for match purpose, we, we keep them separate. So these two vertical legs will help them to create the sear crack. So if you believe that you, if you have a, um, a diagonal crack, it will not be passed because you have these, 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 these fitments and you have this one torsions. If I twist it like this, these uh, horizontal members here down that will help the torsion uh, one. So this is the typical example for 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 um, for uh, for a double legs. Now, um, if you, if you want to find uh, uh, these standards is denoted the area of the fitment by ASV. So if you see the ASV is the area of steel reinforcement, area of sear reinforcement. That's what it says ASV. Now, if you have a uh, two legs and if you can find the area of one leg, pi by four times d square, you will get 80 millimeter square of, of area for one leg. So if you want to find the area ASV in the standards, it's not when you say ASV, if you are using two legs or three legs, you will need to multiply by two. So if you have a three legs, um, if you have three legs uh, fitments, you need to multiply by three to get these uh, uh, ASV uh, values. So that's uh, we have two legs, so we just find ASV equal to two times uh, 80, 160 millimeter square. So I hope you have clear so far. First of all, we need to assume. Assume means we need to add up R10 fitments. Okay, we this is a starting point. 
because the, the example did not tell you which one you can use it but uh, this is a uh, class R uh, with 10 millimeter diameter with the two legs uh, uh, CR reinforcements we are start to use for the design purpose. Now the FSY.F, F, F uh, this is the ill stand and F is the fitments. The standards like to use the word fitments, fitments, literature, stirrups, these words can be used interchangeably. So 250 megapascals. So if I show you where you can find these 250 megapascals, uh, if you uh, by the practice you will remember that one but if you really don't want to remember anything and you want to have a reference of standards all the time so in that case if you go back to these tables here table 3.2.1 by the way these tables is used for material uh, properties so yield strength and ductility class so we are using uh, ductility um, uh, class R and then for that one you have 250 uh, 250 uh, megapascal for this art fitment so as you can see here um, uh, 250 uh, uh, in strength from that tables i can write it down table 3.2.1 table 3.2.1 now look the sears design always start with this check and i will tell you why we're going to make this check always regardless of whatever the sears you must do this check okay we start we start meaning that this we start 343 437 270 should be less than uh, capacity factors times vu maximum why we do this check these checks apply for making sure concrete will not cross and section size adequate for sear capacity so what happens these checks that's saying that if you First of all, you need to check whether your concrete will not going to cross under the loading. It will not just going to fall down, right? It's if, if it is if it is fall down, there is no point to design your design your sections, right? If if this part this check has not passed, we need to increase the size of the beam or increase the strength of the beam and so on, right? So for that case we must check this one to making sure that our section is adequate for sear. Of course, it's adequate for bending, but it's adequate for sear and it will not cross. So that's requirements we need to make it. I will show you where we can find the find this um, find this in the standard. Couple of couple of geometrical values that you know how to calculate a D. I think by this one by heart, if you have this N28 Rio, because we have this N28 Rio, so it's the bottom Rio here. So we can find this small d here. Uh, we can find the small d here that uh, 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 by taking this uh, 650, uh, take away this cover 40 millimeters, take away this fitment dia 10 millimeters, and uh, take away 28 divided by 2. So you can take it 586 millimeters. Now dv, uh, dv is given here on the close. By the way, in this close, I can show it to you. I will walk you through these standards as well. So uh, we are working on this section number eight, which is design of beam and strength and serviceability. We have given you uh, details in the week number three and uh, week number four. We designed the beams. So basically, this two page was dedicated for the for the beams uh, design only. So we can you can take a note that this two page we have we have taken care of. So that is two page for for uh, for uh, beam design under bending. This page we did not cover because it's mostly focusing on the pre-stress side of it, and our course is not not uh, focusing on the pre-stress of of the of the element. So now this pre-stress is not taken into account. Uh, strength of the uh, beam in sear. So this is the particular uh, focus point for this week, where close 8.2 dedicated for the strength for uh, beam in sear. Again, here there is a tonsor and pre-stress torsions. Uh, we will not going to take into account the torsion side of it. Like considering the torsions, we no need to worry about uh, torsion side of it. So basically, our 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 uh, our, our main uh, uh, focus point will start from here, uh, like uh, uh, like from here that minimum transfer sear reinforcement and also on. So first of all, I like to mention here effective sear depth, which is dv. 
shall be taken as maximum of 0.72 d and 0.9 d where d is the distance from extreme compressor fiber to the centroid of longitudinal reinforcement in the half day for this one so we know that uh, the, uh, the 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 values we know so that's what i i written here maximum of 0.72 times d times 0, uh, comma 0 0.9, 0 0.72, d is 650, is given in our examples. That 650 depth is given in our examples, so that substitute here. 0 0.9 times 586, we just found 586 here, which is basically the uh, distance from the center of your tensile reinforcement to the top of the fiber, uh, concrete fiber. So if you just do the maths here, you will see the maximum number between 486 and 527. So in that case, effective CR def dv is equal to 527 millimeters. Uh, PV, uh, we will say no pre-stress. As I mentioned, since our course is not focusing on the pre-stress in the concrete, so we will take PV equal to equal to uh, zero now theta v equal to 36 degree i need to show you that theta v equal to 36 degree where is i'm taking the reference from so uh, there is a uh, we need to make a one or two sums for that one um, here you go so close 8.2.4.3 point point where they mentions the theta v equal to 36 degree so that theta v3 is 36 degree um, uh, we're going to uh, use that theta v equal to 36 degree uh, for, for this our reference. By the way, what is theta v and what is alpha v? I like, I like to, to show you one quick uh, one quick uh, example, so one quick uh, theory here. That Let's say you have this beam. This is beam. This is top rio. This is bottom rio. Okay, this is bending, uh, bending reinforcement or fluxural reinforcement. Let's say you have this fluxural crack. And this is fluxural cap. And let's say this is your uh, reinforcement, the CR reinforcement. Now, theta v, the standard saying that theta v is your angle of the cap with the horizontal line. Where is written? I can show it to you here. Uh, somewhere they have written theta v. Yeah, here you go. Theta v is the angle between the axis of concrete compression stroke. So it's stroke and tie model. So basically, they, uh, this is stroke and this is ties. So this stroke meaning that this crack. The longitudinal axis of the member. So that is theta v. So when you when I reference theta v is basically the the axis of crack and standard saying theta v is 36 degrees so it makes our life easy standard things all the time you will have a sear crack at 36 degree that's what they say what is alpha v alpha v is the angle of your reinforcement so basically if you if you have this rio that if you want to put it on the on the angles it's expensive look no one's use these angles in the special cases only we use angles otherwise we use alpha v equal to 90 degree verticals okay but in theory we will have a the standards also recognize um, this uh, 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 incline one so basically what if you have alpha v theta v and this is the distance s distance s meaning from one reinforcement to the next reinforcement that is the distance s so if i say what is s s meaning that distance from one end to another end theta v is a cracked angle alpha v is your angle of reinforcement so if i want to find this distance i can draw this line i can draw this line i can hold uh, these lines here this blue lines here theta v here alpha v here this is basically d minus dsc so that is d and this is the depth of the compression reinforcement so if i want to find this distance i can use this triangle i can find x1 uh, I can use this triangle, I can find x2, and basically this uh, x1 plus x2, I can find this, it's just a trigonometry, right? So just these triangles, this crack, the triangle between the crack and between the your rio, the, the sear reinforcement, if you take it with the angles, you can find the horizontal distance between the rio and your crack. So if I, if I want to know how many bars in the one region, like how many bars here, like if I have these bars to this, oh sorry, this is a region from one crack to another crack, this is a one region. How many bars in the one region so that this distance divide by this, right? So that is that is written here. Now if I want to know what is the rim, what is the 
what is the uh, what is this uh, force in this uh, bar i would have this area times stress and if i take the vertical components i will get this uh, these values of um, asv times fsy times sin alpha uh, sin alpha v and this by the way alpha v is this this distance uh, goes here so this is the uh, shear reinforcement for one bar so if i want to have a uh, number of bars then one bar times by the number of bars i substitute those values theta v you can have 36 degree but i just want to mention this is dv dv means this standard saying that okay don't take d minus dsc take this one as a dv right effective depth so we just substitute that 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 dv and uh, if you go through all these maths uh, uh, for this one you will end up with taking this vuc which is basically this equations here here you go basically these equations that's the long equations here which i just prove it here okay i have 10 minutes video to explain those things so you can go through it but you don't need to remember that i just want you to put the vocabulary so what does each parameters meaning and if you just substitute alpha v equal to 90 because our reinforcement at 90 degree you substitute alpha v equal to 19 you end up with taking this small equation so basically this equation become this when you substitute alpha v equal to 90 degree this is for incline and this is for verticals so i hope it's make it more clear with this vocabulary um, now i just want you to fill those vocabulary alpha v and theta v when i talk about so i already mentioned alpha v vertical fitments as i mentioned again i can show it to you here alpha v is basically basically this uh, fitments in our case is always 90 degree in our course we are only working with the you know, vertical um, vertical uh, uh, reinforcement only so if i put cot alpha v equal to 90 it becomes zero right so vu max now where i'm going to get it uh, let me find it 8.2.3.3 the equation for vu max there you go uh, uh, this is a shear and torsion strength limited by wave crossing okay we don't want to happen this wave crossings okay we don't want to cross our beams under the shear that is the first and foremost checks that we need to make it if it is crossed there is no point to do the shear reinforcement and so on it's crossed right it's gone the concrete is gone so so therefore we want to make sure that we have a we have this vu max equations written here what is the difference at transfer so we're not working at transfer we just take it this uh, uh, i think i copied this first one uh, yes i have this uh, first one so this first one that we take it uh, 0 0.9 fc dash bv d cot theta v cot uh, alpha v and i think i you know what is alpha v and theta v by this time so it's all depending on your your concrete only okay this is you can look at that there is no reinforcement come into the picture yet we want to make sure that our concrete is not crossing our concrete is strong enough to carry this uh, carry this uh, carry these forces that we coming on to that onto that onto that beam so i copy these equations uh, that is from this close and by the way uh, there is a pv as well uh, Yep, so I just copy these equations, okay? Uh, close 8.2.3.3, I copy these equations to calculate the maximum shear uh, force in the uh, in the in our, our beam sections. So I copy that 0 0.55 FC-32 given in our examples. Given in our examples, 32. Uh, so that is 32 uh, megapascals. Um, then we will have a BV. BV is basically your width of the beam. Okay. BV is basically they will talk this is BV or equal to B. And that is 350 because it's given in in here 350 millimeters. And then you will have a DV. I think we calculated this DV just now here. That uh, DV is calculated here. 527. I substitute that. Uh, theta v 36 degree i show you in the standards i can show it to you again 
where I get this theta v equal to 36 degrees. I think it's just written here and I'll close it 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 theta v equal to 36 degrees. Basically, standard saying that, basically standard saying that, okay guys, uh, don't argue with me what is the theta v equal to, equal to, equal to, uh, that is, there is a methods as well. If you want to go more complex way, you can, you can calculate this theta v, but it's standard say just take it theta v and there is a condition for theta v that we're going to, be going to show you. So that's theta v 36 degree, uh, just make it simple for us and we use that simplify methods rather than complex methods. So let's say theta v equal to 36 degree and alpha v equal to 90 degree because basically we are working, we assume that we're going to provide the vertical um, fitments, like we're going to put those those fitments like this verticals, okay? So we say that alpha V equal to 90 degree. Now, um, so alpha V equal to 90 degree, uh, we plug those all the values. PV is for the reinforcement. I think, I don't know why we get the PV probably from the old standards. This, look, these standards are keep changing. So every six months, they are putting some amendment. They slightly changes, but whatever your latest uh, standards you are using it, you can, you, can, you can use it. They will not going to change your answer significantly. There are some minor updates there. So if you plug those values, 36, at this 90 degree, this becomes zero. Uh, I give you the explanation for that. And if you just use your calculators, you will get the answer in Newton. And then if you just divide by thousands, you get kilonewtons. So let's check it. Okay, we need to multiply by the capacity reduction factors. Uh, I can show it to you where the capacity reduction factor sitting. So if you go back all the way to the six, uh, table 2.2.2, I think if you remember, we done the capacity factors checking for, for the beams. Now we like to check it for sears. Where is it? Oh, sear and torsions. You can see sear and torsions here written for members where class and fitments are provided, meeting the requirement of this, and then sear strength uh, limit by wave pressing, you use 0 0.75. We have R, uh, so we are using 0.7. Otherwise, we use 0 0.7. We have R, R10, so we use 0 0.7 capacity factors for sear. So that is given in table 2.2.2. So we have this capacity factors 0.7 and multiply by this VU maximum. So we found that this value would be, uh, I did not put the answer, sorry. What happens here? Let me use my calculators and put the answers. 0.7 times by 1544, you, you get 1081 kilonewtons. Right, now we let's check it. That we start, uh, 437. So someone might say, why did you take the 437? Because this, the worst case of the beam, that will subject the worst here is 437. Because if you compare 270, 343, these are the winner, 437. So the beam will going to cross, or the this is the maximum uh, point where the beam will going to cross, which is 437. So let's check with the big boys, which is 437, saying that, okay, Beam saying that I will gonna carry 437. Should I have enough capacity to, to carry on my shoulders? So it says that concrete will not cross. Of course, I will be happy. Concrete said I'm happy to carry because you have provided enough size and so on by saying that your five um, uh, maximum will be 1081 kilonewtons. So it is uh, your, your demand, which is 437 kilonewtons is less than or equal to your 1081 kilonewtons, which is five maximum. So I'm happy with that one. In case if your this one higher than this one, you need to go back and check the change the size of the beam. You might need to use the uh, larger beam, or you need to increase the uh, capacity of your of your beam. Uh, let's start with, so everyone happy with these checks? Okay, first checks, always, always make these check, man. So if you are in the, if you are in the, if you are in the carrier or in the exam, so that you always make these quick checks. And because of my explanation, it takes long. Look, it will not going to take, it will take only three minutes if you, if you know your numbers, right? It will not going to take the huge, no, huge task because all these numbers are here. These are given to you somehow in the, in the in the example so if you just plug those values you can quickly find this vu maximum and equations you don't need to remember that is given in the standards so this is a very quick check you always make it make sure that 
concrete will not cross. Now, I'm happy that my concrete will not cross, meaning that my size is, is adequate, uh, which is 650 by 350. Cover is 450 millimeters, it's okay. The, 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 the uh, uh, XCDS 32 is okay. So all these are okay. That's what my first check that I make it. Now let's start with left side, okay? You can start from anywhere. Let's start with support A. That I want to provide the number of fitments here like this at support A, okay? So let's start with support A. How much number of fitments near the support A? For these examples, we are showing number of fitments. Generally, uh, we can just provide the spacing between these uh, fitments, okay? We, that's what we need to calculate. And we can provide how many fitments that we needed near the support A. Um, look, uh, when, you, uh, when you do on the lab test, I think I don't have a photographs. So otherwise, I can show you that photograph. Probably that will not be the good one. So uh, I can show it to you here. Even even in the lab demonstrations, I will show you that if the lockdown is not hidden. If you have supports here, look, the your crack will not start where your support is. The crack will start somewhere uh, near the supports, which is a little bit far. It's not going to start exactly on the supports. Okay, that's 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 the philosophy of the seer. So what does it mean that standards also recognize that and we prove it on the experiment, saying that look, your crack will not gonna start like this. It will not gonna happen. Your actual crack will be happening at some distance from the supports. Okay, I will tell you which how much distance that you can take it, and the standards will telling us. So the your first crack will appear something far away from support. Any supports if you take support A or support B. So you say that this distance will be shear force at distance D zero from the face of the support A. That's quite handy. Close 8.2.3.2. Let me show you. Close 8.3.2. Let me first find it and then I will take you through. Uh, here you go. Um, now the standards recognize that and it's also proved in our laboratory that maximum transfer here near a support is face of the support or a distance d0 from the face of the supports provided that this 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 so we are saying that this distance d v from the face of the support so we it says that dv so look they change it again in the previous one we have d0 last year so they say that a distance dv from the face of the supports so that's quite handy so what what is saying basically it says that this is the face of the supports in your distance is dv right so if you take a distance dv then your crack will start from here that sounds good so you don't need to the, what, what does it mean so you don't need to provide the fitments here here because it will be waste right because there is no crack the main purpose of these fitments to stop this crack so the so standard is allowing you to start your fitments from here i think there is another requirement as well but but this is the starting point that okay you need to uh, making sure that your crack will start from dv distance from the face of the support so that's what is written on the standards in the course this one uh, sorry this one d0 instead of dv uh, i just made this note last year and this look at this amendment they come recently they 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 make it uh, if i show you my previous standards this is my just um, Look, this is also 2018 and I don't have that amendment here. Look at this amendment. So uh, if I go to close 8 point, what was that? Close 8.2.3.2. Uh, close 8.2.3.2. Uh, uh, yes, look at this distance D0. See, so they just, they just made this amendment. but. Of course, whatever the standards you have, they just just follow that follow that procedures uh, uh, on on that one. All right, so that's not be a huge problem for us. Just main thing is to understand the, the the story and what is the theory behind it. So everyone happy that okay, we need to have a distance d zero when the crack will gonna start. That's what the standard saying that that close. Now, so if the crack will start from here, why not we just design it for that seer? We don't need to design it for 343 kilonewtons, right? Because basically we basically we need to design for 343. But the standard saying that uh, you can go 
little bit far, a uh, little bit from off. So why not we designing it at, at the point, at the point where your crack will start? Okay, that's fine. So we need to find the CR at this point, right? You need to find the CR at this point. So let's say uh, you have 150 millimeters because of this half and this distance dv. I think there is a dv. Uh, there will not be big difference, but 527. Uh, so please, please do it your maths here instead of 527. It will not be huge difference here when you convert into the meters. But let's say you have this dv uh, here. So you just calculate this how much distance is this one first. How are you going to calculate? Because you know this dv. This is dv, okay? By the way, we calculated dv before. We have this dv 527 and we know this is 150. So from this end to here, it will be uh, some some little bit different numbers, but you can you can just check it there. So if I know this distance and if I take the straight line equations y equal to mx plus c, let's say this is your shear force, which is on the vertical axis. This is your x and 343 because you have y intercept 343 here. Slope 150 because you have this UDL load 150 and it's going down. So it's negative. So you can basically calculate the shear force about 233 kilo newtons. So standard is allowing you to design it for uh, designing it for 233, designing it for 233 instead of 343. So that's a kind of um, uh, uh, values that you can use it instead of 233. So 233 is quite good. Now uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a close 8.2.3.1. Let me take you through that. 8.2.3.1. Here you go. Now this close saying that for the for the designing of your beam, your capacity, capacity meaning your beam capacity, your beam shear capacity should be greater than your demand, which is your shear demand vista. Now someone might say, what about this YP and PV? Well, PV is your uh, pre-stress, so we put PV equal to zero. So by the way, you can make it 5VU, which is your shear capacity of your beam, should be greater than or equal to V star. And what is VU? VU is the capacity of the concrete and capacity of the steel. So that sounds good. We can write it down. For max purpose, we put it equal to, okay? So V star equal to 5VUC plus VUS which is the concrete shear and uh, fitment shear, reinforcement shear. Look, uh, for the shears, uh, we will divide into two sections. Like some portion of the shear will be carried by concrete, some portion of the shear will be carried by steel. So we will work both two different and we will add them together to make the total capacity of your, of your beam. So that's what I done. Let's start with easy one first. The concrete one is easy. There is no trouble here. Very simple equations that we're going to use. Where is it? I can I can show it to you here. So if you want to first start with concrete, we will have a VUC is determining close 8.2.4. So if you go back to here, oh, there you go. Very simple equations here. KV, BV, DV, square root epsides. There is a one cache though that these square root epsidates should not be exit 8 megapascal. Otherwise, you can't use these equations. Okay, so that is a, that is a one limitation. So our 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 value is square root 32, which is basically square root 32, which is uh, about 6 uh, megapascal. So 6 is less than 6 is less than 8. 6 is less than 8, so that is okay. Basically, it says that 64 uh, megapascals, they don't like it. The, 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 the 64 one comes, then you need to have a different story. Look, 65 megapascals, so that's, they don't like it. So our 32 is okay, so we can still use it. So um, now equations one by one, let's crack it KV. Now KV is close 8.2.4.3. So if you turn it page here, look, this is the two here. Now, either you can use KV by using these equations, like 200 over 1000 plus 1 1.3 dV, dV we already know, or you can use it 
kv equal to 0 0.15 but there is a condition though that your asv should be greater than asv mean now we're going to make an assumption that whatever the reinforcement we're going to provide it's always going to be greater than your minimum reinforcement so in that case we will make it kv equal to 0 0.15 of course we're going to make it check later uh, for this one we're going to check it later that this assumption is valid or not so we make a this assumption saying that our 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 reinforcement over s as you know the reinforcement uh, distance should be greater than asv mean this assumptions we're going to check it later so once you find this asv for that case we take it kv equal to 0.15 substitute kv equal to 0.15 bv is 350 bv is 350 i already showed it to you that uh, in the by previous so that is 350 uh, dv 527 i think i can show it to you both dv is 527 so we calculated basically that that that, that condition effective cr depth and this b is 350 right so uh, it's very simple to calculate the concrete cr capacity not so difficult and square root 32 32 is basically given in our examples in our questions here 32 so we plug those values plug it into the uh, your 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 calculators it will give you this in the newtons and you divide it by thousands you get it in kilonewtons very simple so, okay concrete one was very friendly to us and he is very happy with us only the one catch is we need to check we need to make this assumption that's the catch but we're going to make a later check whether this assumption is right or not otherwise we need to come back and change this kv value and redo all the process again but make sure that we will provide enough uh, reinforcement that is greater than this one now once you know that that uh, 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 we need to provide the fitments where v star is greater than vu what what does it mean since that close 8.2.1.6 okay let me take you through that 2.1.6 Uh, there you go. I think they they updated this one as well. Uh, so here he says that uh, it don't worry about PV. PV is uh, zero. So it should be if you want to provide the required transverse CR reinforcement, you need to have a greater than or VUC. Okay. So that's you need to provide. So basically, it says that what is the meaning in physically in the figures? I can show it to you. It says that you can provide the reinforcement you can provide the reinforcement in the area in the area you can provide you can find that you can provide the reinforcement in the area where your 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 vuc is uh, uh, is less than uh, v stars is it less than uh, vuc uh, v star is greater than sorry yes that's correct so vuc is less than so in this region you don't need to provide the rio because in this region you your concrete is enough to carry the seeds okay so you don't need to provide the rio in this regions in the small region that's what it says that if your if your if your concrete uh, has a let's say a sear reinforcement of the concrete was uh, where was that okay that is v star is greater than v u star only you need to provide in that region so let's say you have this 233 i think uh, we calculated this 233 by the way here 233 uh, 0.7 157 because vuc is 157 vus so you if you simplify that your vus would be 176 kilonewtons so by so it's saying that you provide the fitments in a way that it will take care of this 176 kilonewtons right so that's what the capacity we need to we need to we need to find so basically it says that okay you have 233 kilonewtons some will be taken by concrete let's say by the way 157 taken by concrete 176 will be taken by uh, steel rio and this is concrete so we just need to provide the fitments to take into account this 176 kilo uh, newton uh, cr force so there is an equations i think i show you that equations before and we prove it that vuc is 8.2.5.2 8.2.5.2 8 
Yep, 8.2, 0.5, 0.2. We are using vertical uh, fitments, uh, perpendicular uh, CR reinforcement. We copy these equations from here. So let's copy that equations. This copied, this copied here. 176, we just calculated by just taking, taking away this concrete one. And then you put ASV 160 because 160 millimeter square because we calculate ASV before we assume that ASV 160 millimeter square, uh, the area of the fitments. So that I substitute 250 megapascals. This is R10. So for R from the standards tables, we use R is the yield strength of 250 megapascals. And then uh, uh, 250 DV527 over S is equal to quad 36. Uh, 526 so we can find the s and by the way this s is here's i mentions this s is is the spacing from one rio to the next rio that's the s distance s or you can say spacing uh, for that rio uh, uh, so that is distance s now this spacing s165 millimeter must continue not less than distance d in the direction of decreasing shears there is one more requirement, 8.3.2.3. So 8.3.2.3, 8.3.2.3. Here you go. It says that CR reinforcement area not less than calculated being necessary. Any cross section shall be provided distance D from the cross section in the direction of decreasing CRs. I will explain you this one uh, physically. What does it mean? The, and then there is a second requirement that first pit melts at each end of the span shall be positioned not more than 50 millimeter from the support face. That is also written here. Just line here. The first pit melt at each end of the span shall be positioned not more than 50 millimeters. I will explain you physically what does it means. So basically it says that your first pit melt should start at 50 millimeters. That's what it says here. First fitment should start at 50 millimeters, right? The first fitment should start at 50 millimeters. Uh, then distance D in the decreasing directions, meaning you, you, your, 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 uh, uh, this one is decreasing directions. So you need to, uh, you don't need to stop when you have, when you have, you don't need to stop it here. You need to uh, put it extra D extra fitments right uh, along that along that lines so that's what it says you need to put extra fitments on the d so let's say provide the fitments in the region where uh, this vuc so let's say 110 kilonewton because that is the concrete one because what what what, what does it what, what what is what is telling me that okay you when you have because this is 343 this 110 kilonewton which is we found for our 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 concrete it says that you don't need to provide the fitments here. Why? Because your concrete is strong enough to carry the shear force. That's what it says, right? Because your V star is is uh, uh, your concrete is 110 kilo. This is 110 kilonewtons V star coming from your concrete. So you don't need to provide the fitment in this region. Of course, we need to provide the fitment for another purpose, which I will explain you later on. But for the strength purpose, you don't need to provide the fitment in this region. So you just need to put the put the fitments in here only. That's what it says. But the condition is first fitment would be 50 millimeters, and you need to extend this line up to the D, right? You just need to extra here up to the distance D. That's what two conditions that you need to fulfill. So if I just want to know uh, how much distance uh, at 110, uh, how much distance this one at 110 you can say that is about 1.5 meters that you need to provide the fitments. So that is the here details of the fitments. The, your first fitment set 50 millimeters from the supports and then your spacing is how much? 165 millimeters for the each spacings and then you can calculate that, right? If you just do the max here, 50, 133 and then you need to put extra D. Do you remember extra D? This is the D. 650 millimeters so you can put extra d here so if you just calculated uh, number of fitments so you need 1983 
if you just uh, sum them all up, divide by 166, you need uh, 12 uh, fitments. So you can need about 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 uh, 13 fitment. That's the calculations given here. 1553 plus 650 extra. So you have 13 fitments you need to provide in these regions. So it's like first fitments at 50, and then is an extra bit for D, and you provide these 13 fitments in these regions. Right. I hope you understand this number of fitments that will take care of this uh, year. This year that will be looked after by these 12 fitments or 13 fitments starting from 15 millimeters uh, to down there uh, along these lines. Uh, same story going to follow through the support B. Exactly the same uh, philosophy that we're going to follow through. First of all, at a distance dv please note this is dv okay uh, i show you on that on that uh, close 8.2.3.2 probably we will not going to finish that one uh, in this one probably tomorrow in the workshop i will take you through this but now you got a drill uh, you got a drill meaning uh, i hope you understand that that uh, we're not going to finish this one uh, but let me start talking for next one minute 8.2.3.2 uh, 8.2.3.2 uh, distance dv uh, from the face of the support so so that's almost exactly the same procedures that we follow if you uh, instead of this one we're going to do it here and then we find again this region and then 50 millimeter from here extend distance d from this end and so on but i will walk you through uh, tomorrow uh, there is nothing new i'm going to add it's just the uh, same details that we done it on the support A. And then we will also do the workshop examples uh, examples for that. But 